Hello, I'm Gary Stearman, and with me today is Bill Salas. We're going to talk about a very, very important subject, the resurrections. Well, you know, uh, when I uh, brought us on today, I said very, very important topic. And just talking with you has brought back to my mind how important the subject of the resurrections really mm-hmm. is. And there, there's not just one resurrection, a multiplicity of them. And the, the Lord has a program that I think everybody needs to know about. I concur. And these resurrections, whether you're in the first resurrection or the second resurrection, it is dealing with your eternity, where you will spend eternity. So, I mean, how most important questions and topics do we have here today? Indeed. Now, where do you want to start? Because this is a huge subject. Maybe we ought to lay out the resurrections, you know, in a a very uh, large scale form and then get down to details. Okay, why don't we start with the first resurrection? Okay. Which comes in a few stages. Uh, Jesus Christ was was the resurrection. He was the first resurrection a couple thousand years ago, of course. When the rapture happens, the dead in Christ will rise, and those alive and who remain, living generation at that time, will be resurrected into immortality. So the dead in Christ will rise. That'll be stage two. And then in the first half of the tribulation, the two witnesses will be killed by the Antichrist. They will ascend. They will re- resurrect. And then, of course, they'll ascend to heaven in Revelation 11, verse 11. Then you'll have a resurrection of the Old Testament saints who died for faith in God at that time, before Jesus even came. I'm going to read a proof text on that in Isaiah 26, verse 19. It says, Your dead shall live together with my dead body. They shall arise, awake and sing, you who dwell in the dust, for the dew is like the, the herbs and the earth shall cast out the dead. So in other words, there's proof text, there's a couple more verses, I put them in the Millennium Prophecies book and DVD, that the dead shall rise, and dealing with the Old Testament saints, and then you have the tribulation saints, people who will die during the tribulation period. They will also resurrect, we find that out in Revelation 20, verse five. Uh, John sees, I saw thrones and them that sat on them who was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the image, the beast or his image, and had not received marks on their foreheads. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years, but the rest did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection, and that concludes it. Now, the good news about the first resurrection throughout those various phases is these are all believers in God and in Christ. The Old Testament saints believed in God, and of course now they're all going to be with Jesus. Uh, even the Old Testament saints, when they're resurrected, they're going to be with Jesus in the Messianic Kingdom, the Tribulation saints. They're going to be with Jesus when they resurrect. And then the future is incredible. If we can, Time might permit, we conclude talking about the eternal order after the millennium, where there's so many good things going on. No more death, no more curse of sin. God dwells amongst his people, Jesus and God the Father. So this is the resurrection. We, we've come in here to tell you about this. <laughs> this is the resurrection you want to be part of, because we're about to tell you about the resurrection you don't want to be part of and that's a second resurrection. And by the way, that's why we exist as a ministry, uh, to point the way toward a wonderful resurrection. Uh, Bill, uh, I've got happened happen to have by my elbow here, uh, the Millennium Prophecies in the New Jerusalem uh, book and DVD. And I, I want you to know he's put in a lot of work to separate the ideas uh, between the good resurrection, the bad resurrection, and how it, they fit into uh, biblical history. And, and Bill, you've done a lot of work. Well, I have. And you know, it's, uh, it was Dwight Pentecost and some other people who said there's more written about the millennium than in any other time written about in the Bible, even more than the first coming of Jesus Christ and even the tribulation. And it turns out he's absolutely right. That book is the thicker of all five books in this end time series that we've got. And uh, what a blessing. And it's a very encouraging book, but yeah. it's also a very alert, alerting it and is. warning book as well for people. You need, who, you need to know what's not right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. 
Now, let's continue uh, talking about, uh, we were talking about the resurrection of, uh, I believe, the tribulation saints. And yeah, we got into the first resurrection. It kind of concludes with them at that point. Now we're going to address the second resurrection in the white throne judgment. Matter of fact, Gary, if you've got your Bible open, why don't we take the reader, the viewer to Revelation 20, verse 11, and introduce them to something very important. Verse 11 of Revelation 20 says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, who's, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Right. And now this is after the millennium, the thousand years have happened, and what we call the aftermath age. John now t takes us to that point of time, just in between the interval after the millennium, but before the eternal order. It's a little interval called the aftermath age. And what he says is he sees a white throne and him who sat on it. Now we've got to ask ourselves, who sat on it? Who's sitting on that white throne? Who's going to be the judge, uh, the, uh, judge at that particular occasion? Two verses on that that tells us that's Jesus Christ. John 5, 22 says, The heavenly Father judges no one but has committed all judgment to the Son, His Son, Jesus Christ. Acts 10, 42 says, And He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is He, Jesus Christ, who was ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. And we're talking about now the dead are going to be resurrected as we get into that, and they're going to be now standing before the white throne judgment. Um, We've got, there's, there's a couple purposes for the white throne judgment that I want to talk about, and then we'll get into okay. have you read the next verse. But before you do that, the purposes for the second re resurrection, there's two primary purposes. Revelation 20 tells us, um, 21 verses 12, I believe it is, says, Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. So Jesus is coming to reward everyone according to their work. The believers get rewarded. Uh, the church gets rewarded at the beam and see judgment. But there's, he's got to give the reward to everyone. And in this case, it's not a good reward. He's going to give his reward as a just God to those who had no faith in him. But the other purpose, too, is in Philippians 2, verses 9 and 11. It says, God, the Heavenly Father, has highly exalted him, Jesus Christ, and given him the name above which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow uh, those in heaven and those on the earth and those who are under the earth, which would be in Hades, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, second purpose, every knee shall bow. That includes even those under the earth who have been passed away, died as unbelievers and went to Hades. They've got to be resurrected. They've got to drop a knee and make a public confession. And Gary, this is the thing to know is this is not an altar call. You know, all the believers have dropped to their knees and made that confession. These people will make that confession. They'll be resurrected out of Hades, and they'll have to make that, con that confession. At that, at that point, uh, they will fully realize their mistake. That's right. They're going to be fully cognizant of the fact that Jesus Christ is the highly exalted Lord above all lords. Right. So it's, it's going to be, but at that point, they, they neglected to make their choice. They were appointed to live once and appointed to judgment. They should have accepted Christ while they were alive. That was their opportunity. If you haven't uh, accepted Christ, you've heard about him all your life. You've rejected him. Uh, you're, maybe you're uh, hearing me uh, and, and just as you're walking past television. I don't know. But you need to consider the, the, the serious, serious nature of, of today's subject. And, and uh, Bill Salas has in great detail uh, followed this subject through. It's a subject you need to know about if you haven't received Christ. Absolutely. And I also want to clarify, it was Revelation 20, 2, 12 that said Jesus is coming quickly and to everyone he according, we rewarded them according to their work. I said Revelation 21, 12. So a quick correction on that. But Gary, could you read... What is this going to happen at this white throne judgment? This is getting very serious as we read through Revelation 20, verse 12 in the Bible. Well, as we read through Revelation 20, uh, uh, we have this. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened. That's important. What are those books? Those books are, are records that go way, way, way back, and you're in them. <laughs> Everybody has, is written in a book whether for good or for bad. And the Lord does not forget, believe me. And, and he's got uh, uh, 
shall we say, records keeping methods that outdo our biggest computers, believe me. <laughs> and the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. So what this is telling me, and it has for years, I've thought the records keeping system in heaven has got to be infinite. That's right. And, remember and don't think you're not in it. Everyone's in it. Everyone's okay, in the, it. Okay, we'll talk about the book of life in just a moment, but remember what it says here as you concluded, the books are open and the dead who, these unbelievers that are resurrected, yeah. both small, great, standing for God, the books are open, they're being judged according to their works. And what he said, one of the purposes is I will reward everyone according to their work. So it's a just God, and he's going to justly deal with these people at this point in time. But like, so for instance, everyone's written in these books, uh, Jezebel, wicked Queen Jezebel of the Old Testament during the time of Elijah. She's written about 18 times, and you'll find her in First and Second Kings. Or even the wicked King, Assyrian King Snacharaf, you're going to find he's written in the book of Kings, uh, second book of Kings chapter 19 and Isaiah 37. Mm -hmm. But even the, the, someone who's not of the Old Testament and a modern day person who just did not become a believer, they're written in the book of life because the book of life contains the names of every individual that was ever born. God cared enough for every individual to have an autobiography of that individual. And that book of life is one of the books that's going to be opened. And that book of life, a name can actually be blotted out of, and I'll give you a verse on that in just a minute. So everyone is written in the book of life. God cared enough about everyone, Gary, like you said, in his record-keeping system. But these are people who didn't care enough about God to have faith in Jesus Christ. So this is the, this is the problem now they're facing. Wow. And uh, in general, my, my reaction to, to this is that most of us, and I mean most of us, do not take these things seriously enough when you really get a, a grasp of the scope of all of this, it's, it's staggering. And by the way, I, I like your, uh, your work. I like the way you put things together because you, you capture that, uh, that, that huge, the hugeness, let me say, uh, of, of this whole system that people really don't think about a lot. That's right. And, you know, this is not an easy TV show message to give right now. No. No, this is not warm and fuzzy. But we're not here to be warm and fuzzy. We're here to lay the bottom line out here for if you've not accepted Jesus Christ at this point in time, this is where you're headed. And you've not even heard the, rest of the, the worst of it yet. Well, Bill, you're absolutely right. And by the way, uh, folks, you know that Bill writes for our magazine on, on occasion. And uh, if you subscribe to it, uh, his, uh, his articles will come along and and you'll be able to study as, as things develop. Uh, I write on various subjects uh, concerning prophecy. Of course, Mondo does. But the point is this. You'll have a chance to study at your leisure, and we have information that you vitally need. The Prophecy Watcher, here's how you can get it. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Bob Ulrich, Gary Stearman's partner and the co-founder of Prophecy Watchers. I would love to tell you how you can become a subscriber to our wonderful Prophecy Magazine, creatively named The Prophecy Watcher. And ready for this? How you can get eight powerful Prophecy DVDs as a free bonus for subscribing today. Every day, the ancient prophecies of the Bible get more and more exciting as we watch world events come into perfect alignment with the words of the ancient prophets. Examine the pre-trib rapture doctrine taught by the Apostle Paul. Come to a deeper understanding of the giants of Genesis 6 and the real reason for the flood of Noah. Read the shocking things we see coming out of the world of science and technology, mind-blowing advances in transhumanism and artificial intelligence. Keep a close eye for a series of wars coming very soon to the Middle East. The Bible's a supernatural book, and we enjoy covering the fringe subjects and dark corners of Scripture as well. UFOs, the Nephilim, the miracles of the Bible, and so much more. It's a one-of-a-kind publication full of articles that will make you a Bible prophecy expert and prepare you for the future. We have a very special subscription offer for you today for your gift of $50 or more to support the worldwide outreach of Prophecy Watchers. You can subscribe to either the digital version or the print version of our magazine. And here's the best part. 
In addition to receiving 12 monthly issues of the magazine, this offer comes with a fantastic bonus, eight DVDs from some of the leading prophecy experts in the world today. Eight DVDs plus 12 issues of the magazine represents a $200 value, but it's available today for your gift of just $50 or more to support the work of Prophecy Watchers. This offer is available anywhere in the USA and will ship both the magazine and the DVDs absolutely free. Don't wait or hesitate. Call the toll-free number on your screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Looking at the future through the lens of Bible prophecy is the entire focus of this ministry. We're motivated like never before by our desire to tell the world that Jesus is the only answer for these troubling times. And we do believe that he's coming back very soon, just as he promised. Partner with us today. Help us take God's message of salvation through Jesus Christ to the whole world. Hope you'll avail yourself of uh, that offer. And I just want to say, we worship a God of love. He's watching out for us. But he's also a God who, once he begins judgment, uh, comes down hard, just as mentioned in Scripture, time and time again. And we watch day by day by day for your information, for your uh, watchful care, because things are happening. Right, Bill? That's right. He keeps records and his rewards are going to be uh, justly given. If you're a believer, you're going to be so thankful you're a believer. Yeah. Your eternity is bright, let's say at the very least. But if you're not a believer, your eternity is the lake of fire. And we're going to get there in just a moment. Okay. Now, I wanted to say one thing about the Book of Life. A couple of verses to substantiate what we've been talking about. Psalm 139, 16. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book of life they were all written, the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. So the book of life contains the name of everyone, mm -hmm. but yet we're told in Psalm 69, 28, let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. So in other words, the book of life, your name can actually be blotted out. And I believe what happens, and we're going to read another, we're going to go on verse 13 and verse 15 in Revelation 20, that blotting out process occurs at this point in time during the White Throne Judgment. Their names are in the Book of Life all the way up to the White Throne Judgment. They're raised out of the dead. But let, I'm getting ahead of myself. Would you read Revelation 20, verses 13 and 15 as we go through? Revelation 20, starting with verse 13. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. And death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Period. Right, and everyone once upon a time was written in the book of life. Yeah. And yet names get blotted out here. Now they're the anyone that's not found written in the book of life that are cast in the lake of fire. Now let's talk about death in Hades for a minute. Uh, death is, of course, the f physical departure of a person from the body, and then the soul is the immaterial aspect of the individual. It goes into Hades if you're an unbeliever. If you're a believer, you're in the presence of Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay, so there's a stark contrast of zip codes there, obviously. So if you're an unbeliever, you go in, in and nobody alive goes into Hades. No, no one alive gets into Hades. That's where the souls go. Okay. Now we're talking about death and Hades bring forward in the second resurrection all those souls. And I'm talking, it's talked about the dead and the great and the small and all that we've been talking about. Every unbeliever throughout all time, going back to the time of Noah, back, you know, Adam's time, on through the modern day, on through the tribulation, the people that take the mark of the beast, etc. They're going to be standing right here. Billions, billions of people that they're going to be standing at this judgment. And that's, that, that should be very concerning. If you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, you're going to be in this crowd right here. Indeed. <clears throat> and again, uh, there's documentation. <laughs> it's scattered all the way through the Bible. And what Bill has done is uh, systematize it. He's put it in, in uh, shall we say, uh, group, groupings of information that you can read and understand, put together and understand how all uh, life, death, judgment, how God's system works. 
Okay, so the other thing too, as you read those verses closing on Revelation 20, it's the second death, and death in Hades is cast into the lake of fire, meaning there's no more need for a holding tank, that geography of death in Hades, because yeah. everyone's been resurrected now. So they go to a new place, as did death in Hades, and it says, if their name's not written in the book of life, you're cast, and this would be alive into the lake of fire now. Where, where they're going to meet, who they're going to meet there in the lake of fire at the beginning of the millennium, millennium in Revelation chapter 19. The Antichrist, when he was defeated at the battle of Armageddon, his false prophet, these two were told were cast alive in the lake of fire. They spent he, the thousand year millennium, they, they were alive in the lake of fire. Now all these other people, these billions of other people, are going to be standing before Jesus Christ, dropping to a knee, making a public confession, yes, you are the Lord. My rewards are just, I'm going to be cast in the lake of fire. They're going to witness the blotting out of their names, and they're going to be cast alive in the lake of fire to meet up with Satan will be there too after the millennium, Jesus, uh, an Antichrist, and the false prophet. What a horrific scene, Gary. Absolutely. It's, and uh, <clears throat> beyond serious. Uh, this is the thing that uh, you don't really want to talk about it. it it's, just, it's almost too grim. But it's something you need to be aware of uh, for your own spiritual growth. And certainly if you're outside of the family of God through Christ, you need to listen up because uh, you're not excluded. You are included. The reason we're coming to you right now with this firm, hard message is because we don't think as a church we're going to be here a whole lot longer. Yeah. We're seeing the world, all the end time signs are converging. The rapture of Jesus coming to catch us up in the twinkling of an eye to be with him forever in part of the first resurrection of the church. Um, it's got to be happening at any given time. Uh, and, and so we're trying to say, look, when we're gone, we can't give you this message. We're gone. We're in heaven wishing you were there with us if you're not a believer. And hopefully you are a believer and you will be there with us. But that's why we're delivering this hard, firm message. But on the, on the flip side... Yeah, on the some, flip side, I want to hear that. Yeah, the flip side is, if you put your faith in Christ, if you've already done that, or if you will do that, and you can do that right now. You don't have to wait till bad things start to happen and go, oh, I should do this. You should do it right yeah. now because you're seeing what's going on in the world scene. There's going to be a millennium with a lot of wonderful things going on. But after the thousand-year millennium, we get in, we're talking about what happens with this white throne judgment, things like that. Then there's a, it said there's a new heaven and a new earth going to be made. And there'll be what's called an eternal order. So people yeah. who believe in Jesus Christ get to go into the eternal order. There'll be a new Jerusalem, a city of gold, a river of life, a street of gold in the middle of that. It's going yes. to be this new Jerusalem, we're told, is going to be 1,500 square miles. Warren Wiersbe says it's going to be two-thirds of the size of the United States, Gary. It's going to be fantastic. And I'm going to be there. You're going to be there <laughs> on the streets of gold. Absolutely. And everyone can be there. This city, this, this eternal order is... God wants every, what did John 3, 16 say? For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who would believe in him, whoever believed in him would yep. not perish, in their everlasting life. That's what God wants. He sent his son for the whole world. But unfortunately, not the whole world is going to be, be believe in Jesus Christ. Let's pause just for, uh, for a moment and uh, tell you how you can uh, get uh, these wonderful uh, creations by Bill Salas. The prophets of the Bible wrote about the future over 2,500 years ago, and today we see many of their prophecies coming to life in amazing detail. It's always a joy to have Bible prophecy expert Bill Salas with us at Prophecy Watchers. Bill began to create a biblical roadmap to the future over 100 years ago, investigating a series of prophesied wars found in the Old Testament. But Bill's new book, and companion DVD, The Millennium Prophecies and the New Jerusalem, takes us to a different place. It's a journey into the future to investigate a subject most Christians know little about, the things that take place on earth after Jesus returns. What are Christians going to be doing during this thousand year millennium period? How will Jesus deal with sin during this 1000 year period? Will Christians be living on the earth or living in the New Jerusalem? This book and DVD are chock full of complicated and curious questions and well-researched answers. 
We're making the Millennium Prophecies book or the Millennium Prophecies DVD available to you today for your gift of $25 or more to help support the important work of Prophecy Watchers. Shipping is included anywhere in the USA with a free bonus DVD included with every order. We're also making both the book and the DVD available in a special New Jerusalem package for your gift of $50 or more. In addition to Bill's new Millennium book and DVD, we're including a free bonus book with your order, The Day of Ezekiel's Hope When Millions Have Vanished. Just call the toll-free number on your screen 24-7 and we will get this well-researched book and companion DVD on its way to you. Our mission here is to be an encouragement to you and to keep as many people as possible out of the tribulation period by sharing the good news of Jesus and His soon return. We appreciate your prayers and support for our ministry as we take the gospel all around the world. A new day is coming, and we believe it is just around the corner, drawing closer each and every day. So be encouraged. Jesus is coming soon, just as He promised. Well, I hope you will take advantage of that uh, offer. Uh, I believe me, you'll be encouraged. And Bill, we were, uh, before the break there, we were uh, reading about the highlights of the eternal order. And I, I want you to complete these and, and kind of put the, the bright side out uh, in the foreground. Right. And there'll be an image that you can see the verses. That I'm going to talk about the highlights of the verse. The verses you can actually go to in Revelation uh -huh. 21 and Revelation 22 to find out how we come, came up with these highlights. Uh, you know, it said there'll be a new heaven and a new earth in Revelation 21, verse 1. Um, there'll be a whole new holy city called the New Jerusalem. Okay, and I'm going to get into that, the highlights of that in just a moment. But the, the thing that's amazing to me is because there's no more curse or sin nature, God the Father himself now can dwell amongst his people. It says God the Father will dwell amongst his people. There will be no more curse, no more death, which is a symptom of, a, a byproduct of the curse, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. All things will be made new. God's people will be treated as sons and become heirs to all things, Gary. What are all the things God has for us? I mean, yeah. let your mind wander and imagine on that. There'll be no fifth Jewish temple for God, because there's going to be a third Jewish temple. We won't spend much time on that, but they're going to build a third Jewish temple, and that's the tribulation temple. There'll actually be a millennial temple, but there'll be no fifth temple, uh, Jewish temple because God and its lamb are its temple. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. There'll be a crystal clear, pure river of life, and there'll be a healing tree of life. I mean, these are just the highlights. Just the imagine highlights. all the other specifics that are going to happen in there. Paradise. That's right. I mean, I, we have the word paradise, but I don't think the word paradise is strong enough. It's beyond paradise right. from our uh, position right now. And uh, you can barely imagine how beautiful it's going to be, but. Uh, Bill helps you out uh, with the book and, and DVDs. He's done a lot of uh, research. He's put together a lot of verses that you wouldn't ordinarily fit together. And uh, you've done a good job. Thanks, Gary. Bill, uh, always good to have you. Come again. I will do it. This is Gary Stearman. And remember, we're watching. You be watching, too. Mm -hmm.